I welcome to our group presentation on consumer insight. My name is Tom and I'll be giving a brief introduction to Cadbury's as a company and the learning behind Cadbury's and the importance of it. My name is Hugh and today I'll be talking about perception of Cadbury's as a brand, the market share and position of Cadbury's on a perception map. Hi, I'm Jacob and today I'll be talking about family reference groups as well as concluding the presentation. Cadbury's was established in 1824. Cadbury's mission statement states, Cadbury means quality. This is our promise. Our reputation is built upon quality. Our commitment to continuous improvement will ensure that our promise is delivered. Cadbury also owns a 13.7% market share of leading chocolate companies in the world. It also uses different marketing communications tools, including direct marketing, sales promotion, public relations and advertising. Cadbury's led the brand index table with a score of 34.9 in 2019. The first table shows Mondelez International, owners of Cadbury's, having the highest company retail market share by volume in the UK at 34.4%. The second table shows Cadbury's Dairy Milk having the highest brand retail market share by volume in the UK at 17.2%. This competitive perception map of the chocolate market shows that Dairy Milk is in middle ground in terms of quality and price. There are several competitors in the same position as Cadbury's, all medium price and medium quality, one of which is Nestle's Kit Kat our chosen competitor. Premium product examples, those that are high priced and high quality, are Charbonneau and Walker, Lint and Green and Blacks, with supermarket own brand chocolate being in the low price and low quality section. According to Solomon in his book, Consumer Behaviour, A European's Perspective, learning is a change in behaviour that is caused by experience. Learning can occur through simple associations between a stimulus and a response, or via a complex of cognitive activities. There are two types of learning I will discuss, behavioural learning and cognitive learning. This figure shown by Solomon Bamosi and Asgard shows a stimulus being permitted to the consumer which commits a response from the consumer. This view is represented by two key approaches to learning which include classical conditioning and operant conditioning. These two conditions are both shaped by certain feedback they receive. According to Antonides and Raj, the starting point of classical conditioning is an unconditioned stimulus followed by a natural, spontaneous reaction, the unconditioned response. The figure below shows Pavlov's observation of the association between a dog and a bell. Each time the dog would get served food, the bell would be rung. Therefore, later down the line, the bell became a conditioned stimulus, creating an association with the food which made the dog salivate at the sound of the bell. When consumers see the colour purple, the main thoughts related are luxury, royalty and high quality, which are positive associations to this colour itself. The figure shown from manifested marketing shows a conditioned stimulus of relating the colour purple to Cadbury's prolific and historic brand. This therefore creates a conditioned response for the consumers to judge Cadbury as a luxurious confectionery due to the other conditioned response of purple association with luxury and high quality. According to Antonides and Raj, operant conditioning is a type of learning in which the consequences of behaviour lead to changes in the probability of that behaviour's occurrence. Operant conditioning links different consumer learnings and behaviours to certain rewards and punishments. An example in relation to Cadbury's is the chance of winning tickets to different attractions around the United Kingdom in promotional chocolate bags. This is an example of operant conditioning because the behaviour of purchasing a promotional Cadbury's chocolate bag could lead to winning a free ticket to a popular attraction in the UK, therefore rewarding certain customers that are purchasing the products themselves. Here is an example from KitKat of operant conditioning and behavioural learning theory. In this particular case, consumers relate their breaks to a positive point in the day with enjoying a particular chocolate bar. Breaks can also be considered as a reward through the day after working hard and achieving a hard result. Kit Kat is considered as a favourable event and is a reinforced stimulus that comes after a particular action that has occurred which joins a full working day with a desired result. According to Solomon Bamosi and Asgard, observational learning occurs when people watch the actions of others and note the reinforcements they receive for their behaviours. 
According to Zipporah and Iberia, advertisers use celebrities in the advertisement to increase the effectiveness and heighten the credibility of commercials. Observational learning can be linked directly to Cadbury's with reference to celebrity endorsement. In March of 2017, Cadbury released an advertisement campaign showcasing their new partnership with Oreo, creating three different chocolate bars. The advert shows famous celebrities including Eamon Holmes and Ryland Clark enjoying the new chocolate bars while discussing their particular relationship with their partner. This can be linked to observational learning because celebrities showing interest and enjoying the new Cadbury's products may influence consumers to repeat this behaviour and try the products themselves. In this advert for Kit Kat, it gives two key influences that can be related to observational learning. The first influence is taking a break during a hard shift at work. It shows the enjoyment and pleasure that the worker is getting from eating the Kit Kat during his break. Consumers may want to mirror these actions to get the same pleasure that the worker is getting. The second influence shows consumers in the advert how to snap and eat the Kit Kat itself. Consumers may be influenced by this and by observing this advert they could eat the chocolate bar the exact same way the model is showing. Perception is defined by Smegian and Piacentini as the process by which information in the form of stimuli in the environment is selected, organised and interpreted by organs. Perception is what we take away from these sensations and how we assign meaning to them. Krishna defines sensory marketing as the marketing that engages the consumer's senses and affects their perception, judgment and behaviour. Often the hardest part for marketers is ensuring that their product gets the right exposure. This is hard for cabaries as they are battling for exposure in a heavily crowded market in visually noisy places such as store counters and supermarkets. For dairy milk, the senses that are typically targeted by marketers are taste and sight. By targeting multiple senses and creating an emotional connection with your customers, it ensures maximum brand loyalty. There are five sensory systems, sight, smell, taste, touch and hearing. I will be focusing on how Cadbury's target the taste and sight sensory systems as well as the touch system. Cadbury and Nestle are both global confectionery companies who use sensory marketing. I'm going to compare an advert from each. Cadbury released the Joycicle campaign in 2015. It involved six cyclists riding around London on a tandem bicycle distributing dairy milk bars who were standing in queues. The cyclists were equipped with musical instruments and were playing music. The aim was to give out dairy milk bars to alleviate the stress that had been caused by the public transport crisis. This guerrilla marketing technique was aiming to grab people's attention and create a buzz, as people were encouraged to tweet the bike's location. According to a study by Hertz and Engen in 1996, 80% of information collected by humans is collected through sight. So by wearing the trademark Cadbury purple colour on their shorts and helmets, as well, in, as, well as giving giving out the purple wrap bars, the brand would have been extremely recognisable to the target audience through the triggering of the sight sense. The colour purple is associated with luxury, but is also associated with calmness and stress relief, which was perfect for the situation at the time. The second sense trigger would be taste. The free bars distributed would have triggered the taste receptors when eaten, not only reminding the person eating it of the taste of dairy milk, but that paired simultaneously with the stressful situation at the time would have further hammered home the calming and relaxed association of dairy milk, strengthening the brand connection and association. By distributing chocolate bars, it allowed customers to touch the bars, triggering a third sense, touch. The smooth feeling of the Cadbury's bar is iconic and paired with the smooth tasting chocolate, this would have strengthened the brand connection. The riders were equipped with musical instruments, therefore targeting a fourth sense, hearing, which again would provide another avenue of association. Nestle created a campaign for the Kit Kat bar in 2015. This involved limited edition packaging as well as changing the mould on the chocolate bar from Kit Kat to hashtag my break. They invested over 10 million to create new TV and digital advertising and furthered their exposure by getting influencers to promote their product on social media. They were really trying to reinforce the association of having a Kit Kat on your break. They targeted the sight sensors by redesigning the packaging, drawing attention to the product, which is the same technique as Cadbury's, targeting the most influential sensory system, hoping to attract attention from their target audience. Unlike Cadbury, instead of triggering the taste sensor with the flavour of their chocolate bar, they targeted the sound system, as on their TV adverts, at the end of each they played the recognisable sound of the snapping of a Kit Kat bar. This is an effective technique to use as the sound sensors trigger subconscious desires in the customer. This is an example of, tip of a typical sensory focus advert. In conclusion, whilst Cabri and KitKat both use sensory marketing effectively, both, both using sight sensors, Cabri using taste and KitKat using sound, 
Cadbury would have had a more meaningful connection with its customer. As a combination of sight, taste and sound, and the physical event of being handed a bar would have been made would have made a more meaningful connection with consumers and made a stronger impression. At the end of 2016, Cadbury's held a 16% market share and Kit Kat held a 3% market share. Here are some images of Cadbury's targeting the touch and taste sensors during their campaign. These are images from the Kit Kat advert showing them targeting the touch sensors as well as the sound sense as the sound of a Kit Kat breaking is played on the ad. Studies on family and reference groups have shown peers have influence on consumers' decision when buying a product. But within today's society, consumers have many different influences which can affect their final decision on what choice they make. Influences such as family and extended family, but also further influences like opinion leaders, which is in today's society a big impact on consumers' perspective of brands. As many celebrities or influencers on social media are paid by certain brands to promote their branding image, making that brand more recognisable and memorable. The modern household over the years has been described as many different things. The extended family used to be the most common household. This would be three generations including grandparents, aunts and uncles. This household is still popular in Asia but not so much in the Western society. The nuclear family became the view of a modern family consisting of a mother, father and one or more child. However, this has also changed and is no longer a realistic view of the modern family. The family household is now known as a shared residence and common housekeeping arrangement. Different family units have decided to share households or live alone. One person households, lone parent families, unmarried couples and also multi-person households share between professionals, accommodations, reconstituated or blended families and LGBT families. Due to the diversity in today's modern household and the demographics within them, marketers are having to adapt and evolve their definition of family and how they're going to target them to become a household name. Word of mouth marketing and communication is the most important driver. Word of mouth is a product information that individuals transmit to each other. Word of mouth can have massive impact on businesses and their brand image. It is not a new idea or concept and communication between consumers has always been powerful. However, with the drastic use of social media, consumers are able to hit a large audience with just a few clicks to share their opinion, whether that's bad or good. There are two types of word of mouth marketing, organic and amplified. Organic is naturally occurring, usually after a positive experience a consumer has had with a brand. Amplified is marketers using techniques to create a buzz around a product through surprise techniques such as guerrilla marketing. An example of this is the Gorilla advert which aired in 2007 from Cadbury's, which showed a gorilla playing the drums to Phil Collins in the air tonight and was designed to create a buzz and conversation about the brand in the reward of amplified word of mouth marketing within the social communities and the countries it was aired in. It also managed to increase sales by 10% and also in 2015, over a thousand people took part in a survey and was still voted the public's favorite ad with 19% of the vote. The idea behind the ad wasn't to sell the chocolate as it wasn't even shown within the video. It was however created to catch people's attention and generate a positive outcome to get people talking about the fun, quirky advert created by Cadbury's. Cadbury's and Nestle are two of the biggest confectionery companies and both have to obtain this image through marketing techniques. Cadbury's did this with an advert released in 2018, which saw a daughter try to buy chocolates bar the fake coins and little toys in order to purchase her mother a birthday present. As well as triggering, triggering an emotional response, it also showed the dynamic, the modern household, and this is in relation to the family household, which is dynamic in today's modern society. The aim of the advert was to help recapture the magic and reconnect with consumers, and Cadbury's were banking on its family image to help with that. Nestle has also used what seems to be a traditional family of a mother, father, son and daughter all wearing similar outfits to indicate this, known as a nuclear family. During the ad, they're all sitting on the sofa, which is common for families to do, and Kit Kat are trying to portray that their chocolate is a family snack and become a household name. The advert released in 2016, which promoted its Kit Kat as a break time snack, showed a variety of ways to enjoy the snack, including dunking, snapping, nibbling, sharing and staring. Overall, both parties have used families to promote themselves as a family confectionery for everyone to enjoy. However, both have taken different routes in order to gain this image and connect with consumers. To conclude, Cadbury's are top of the range chocolate which is currently leading the market within the UK 
as use different techniques to gain customers. Learning and memory is a main component of consumer decision making and is used in a variety of ways to target different memory systems. Sensory marketing is used to stimulate sight, smell, taste, touch and sound. This is used to influence consumers' behaviour and perception. Family and reference groups have an effect on the way consumers think and perceive brands as they often possess more knowledge.